You okay there, it's Tim G5TM and thanks for joining me again for another video. Now I've been looking at uh, using my NFED Halfwave Portable and I'll be doing a lot more of that over the next few weeks. But one of the configurations I've been looking at is something called the half square. Bearing in mind what the antenna looks like, what you basically have then is really nice gain broadside to it. So effectively, if you think that you're standing where one of those vertical elements is and you're looking basically towards the plane of the antenna like that, then broadside you'll get some very nice gain. Around 4 dB better or thereabouts than say a, a quarter wave or a half wave vertical would be. But um, what you will also get is when you're standing in that same position, either if you're going towards further on than one of the verticals or back away from one of the verticals, you're going to have a null. OK, so there's a null, quite a deep null off the ends of this antenna. So good gain broadside but off the off the ends. You've got uh, quite deep nulls. So you've got to be careful how you position this antenna. Now, as I say, it's fed with coax, which means you have potentially a pretty good match to 50 ohms. Well, it does mean, of course, that this antenna is a monobander. Now, it's also usually uh, one wavelength long. So for 20 meters on the 14 megahertz band, you'll need a 20 meter or 66 foot long or thereabouts antenna. And of that uh, 20 meters, you have a five meter vertical, another five meter vertical, continuous wire fed at one of the corner tops and you'll have 10 meter horizontal section going across like that. And that gives you that great gain broadside, but the nulls off the ends as well. But feed it with coax at the top, it means it's current fed. So therefore, the current, uh, the current maximum, if you like, is, is off the ground, which means it's got quite, uh, quite decent takeoff. But fed with coax, of course, the antenna is a single band antenna. So how then could we make this antenna a multiband? Well, instead of feeding it in one of the top corners, you could feed it at one of the bottom ends. So let's look at what this means. You can see now the configuration here, the alternative configuration, where we've got the feed point, in this situation at the bottom left hand side there. and you can see I've, uh, you can feed it basically in this particular location of the antenna with something like a 49 to 1 transformer because you're now feeding this antenna uh, like a voltage fed antenna okay so you basically you've got a very high impedance now down there instead of being current fed with low impedance you're going to have very high impedances feeding it on the end because don't forget now, this is basically an NFED half wave, all right? So if it's going to be 66 feet long, 20 meters long, it's now become an NFED or it's had half wave uh, length on 40 meters, all right? And you're feeding it at the end. So you'll need a high impedance transformer or some form of matching system to bring that impedance down to something which your, uh, which your radio is going to, be, going to like to see. And typically the sort of... Uh, the value of the impedance you're going to have on the end there will be in the thousands. It'll be something between two and four thousand ohms. So typically, therefore, a 49 or maybe a 60, 64 to one transformer should bring that down to uh, levels which should be quite manageable uh, for your radio to cope with. Certainly well under two to one SWR. So on 40 meters then, well, what we've got here is a good old fashioned cloud burner. Uh, on its uh, half wavelength frequency, which is what it would be, of course, being 66 feet long or 20 meters long, we've got ourselves effectively a low dipole. So we're not looking here at the DX monster of an antenna at all. In this case, if you want to chat to your friends, if you've got good short skip, 500 miles or so or less, or you want to hop into Europe if you're in the UK, 1,000 mile, 1,500 mile hop, this antenna will be absolutely fine. Think about it. Effectively, what we have here is an antenna which is a low dipole. The horizontal section is effectively uh, the, the dominant thing here. It's mainly horizontally polarized as an antenna. It's only five meters off the ground, which is a, what, an eighth of a wavelength off the ground. So therefore, it's going to be pretty much a low dipole. So on the full half wavelength frequency, we're not looking at a uh, an antenna which is really suited for DX at all. More for closer in communication. Now, if you remember, when we looked at the monoband version, it was a full wavelength long, as this would be on 20 meters. Now we begin to see some much better low angle performance. Now on this particular um, diagram we've got here on the left, we've got the azimuth pattern. We can see there, first of all, that the antenna is fed where you've got the letter Y on the left hand side on the Y axis. 
and therefore the antenna is running straight across the middle, okay? So you can see broadside where the gain really is in yellow. And peak gain is around minus 2.5. It's about then three and a half dB better than say a ground mounted uh, quarter wave vertical on 20 meters. But you can see though, there are quite relatively pronounced nulls off, off the ends of the antenna, like you have with the dipole really. Because if you think about it, with a half wave dipole, uh, you're going to have, if it goes across, I guess, you can have broadside, good gain, and then off the ends, you're going to have nulls. And this, this is the same sort of principle, all right? Except in this situation, obviously, you don't have to get the antenna very high up to get um, that sort of performance or something maybe a little bit better, but you don't have to get this antenna very high up. It's going to be about a quarter wavelength above the ground, all right? So that's the beauty of this antenna. But you need to be careful where you position this antenna on 20 meters because if you want to shoot, say, for the, the States, if you want to go for something towards the west or the east, you've got to position the antenna north-south because that's where you're going to have the gain off the sides, all right? If you're going to go down the road of going, wanting to shoot, say, down to the south, maybe you want to speak to someone in South Africa or down to South America, you've got to position the antenna so, the broad, so you've got that gain off the broad side in the direction you want to face. So the antenna is relatively directional. If you go back to the diagram for a second, you can see that in yellow, that's basically where the antenna is at least or better than minus 6 dB, okay, at five degrees. That's the one thing I haven't told you. That's at five degrees elevation, where we have, you know, good DX performance. And that's where we're gonna have a lot of the, the average sort of angle where DX signals tend to come in. So, you can see there that it is strictly a good performer for DX off the broad side of the antenna. Now on 15 meters, we begin to see this antenna really performing very well indeed. The azimuth pattern on the left, you can see now again at a five degree, ele degree elevation, very low takeoff angle. In yellow, this, uh, this antenna is basically better in, well shaded in yellow, than minus 6 dB. So apart from literally in total, something in the region of about 30, no, about 60 degrees, I should say, uh, ironically broadside, so you can see now the pattern has broken up. So actually the nulls on 15 meters, in contrast to 20 meters, the nulls on 15 meters are actually directly now broadside because the pattern has broken up. The antenna is now about, I guess, one and a half wavelengths long. So you've got now four lobes in the corners, all right? So you've got four lobes in the corners according to this particular diagram. And uh, we've got some nice gain, no? Peak gain is about minus 2.5 dB, and again, only uh, only on those sharp broadside uh, areas there do we see no yellow shading, which means there it's actually worse than the quarter wave vertical. Everywhere else it matches or betters a quarter wave vertical for 15 meters. That looks really promising. And finally, the, the band that really surprised me in terms of performance was 10 meters. So looking at 10 meters then, now you may see there's a bit of red in that left hand uh, diagram. Well, those bits in red are literally the only parts on of a five degree takeoff. They're the only bit of that 360 degree azimuth that are actually worse than a quarter wave vertical, all right? Everywhere else, this antenna actually beats a quarter wave vertical on 10 meters. And in fact, our peak gain is minus 0.9 dB, where you see that shaded in yellow. And effectively, that means we're about five and a bit dB better off than a than a common garden sort of vertical antenna. Um, we've got a very nice low angle takeoff as you can see on the right hand side and the antenna is a bit of a, a bit of a monster on 10 meters really. In fact if we look at the the mixture of vertical and horizontal polarization you can see on the right there it's dominated in red with uh, the vertical polarization. Um, and it really does have a very, very nice, uh, omid, almost completely omnidirectional um, gain at that low angle. Uh, it does a really good job on 10 meters. We've got a real mixed bag with this antenna. On its half wavelength, it's pretty much a cloud warmer. It's a low dipole. On its full wavelength, in this case, 20 meters, we've got that broadside 
pattern of gain with nulls on relative nulls on the end. So you've got to be careful about how you position it in terms of directionality. But as we go higher in frequency, we've got more of an omnidirectional pattern happening and an increase in gain. So on 15 meters, as we saw, we've got some nice gain there and uh, pretty much better than a minor, than, than minus 6 dB, which is your sort of vertical ground mounted antenna quarter wave for most of that, uh, for most of the 360 degree pattern. And on 10 meters, practically for all of it is better. With some really nice gain on on five degrees takeoff, don't forget this is. So we are testing it out here. We've got minus 0.9 dB uh, on its peak. And for most of that antenna, it's about minus two, minus three, minus four. So it's, it's it looks a really nice performer. And don't forget, all we've got here is one wire, one wire in this case, 20 meters long, goes up, um, you know, it goes up five meters across 10, down five, probably best to feed it maybe about 50 centimeters off the ground. So two six meter poles, that's all you want to, to actually set this antenna up. Um, so if you can find two supports for it, position it about 10 meters apart, try and keep the sag, it may be of a sag there, don't worry too much about that, but obviously make sure it doesn't bow too much because you want to keep the pattern as best you can. But feed it in the corner, use a 49 to 1 or a 64 to 1. And to be honest with you, you've got yourself an antenna, which I think um, could do really well, especially in this case, which did surprise me, I have to say, on 10 and 15 metres. Well, thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, then click subscribe and even that notification bell for any future videos and give me a, a like and a thumbs up would be lovely. But whatever you do and whatever you do on the radio over the next few days, uh, I wish you well. Take care. Thanks for watching and maybe I'll catch you on another one. All the best to you and uh, enjoy the radio. Bye bye.